It's a new year. It's a new team. It's a new game. You're working and prepping hundreds of days and hundreds of hours. It's a grind, 24-7 football nonstop. Go! I hear the pads popping. Drive it, drive it. I see people coming together as a group. As a football junkie, that's art. Go! No matter how many ice baths you get in, you're gonna be hurting a little bit. Those fall Saturdays are the culmination of months of sweat and blood. It's a dream that you've been thinking about all your life, but once you get there, it can be an eye-opening experience. Got your juices flowing, you're excited, you're anxious. We always tell each other one unit, one goal. Approach every day like it's your last. Intercepted! He's gonna score! Touchdown! It is picked off! He's gonna get a pick six! Oh, did he catch it? Yes! Our ultimate goal is to win a Big Ten championship. Anything less is unacceptable in our eyes. Sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff. You let him get the lead. And then you just come back and take it back. Do you think of Michigan State as your little brother? Yep. <laughs> For Michigan State, uh, those were fighting words, and it really rekindled the spirit. Javon Ringer bounces off the pile. He has 4-3 speed. Touchdown, Michigan State, 64 yards. Michigan, Michigan State, what's it mean? It, it really is the difference between walking the alleys and walking the streets the rest of that year. Caper to the house, touchdown! Michigan State has won! You win that game, you can walk the streets with your head high um, and with pride for the next 364 days. Cousins has single coverage out there. Caught for a touchdown by Mark Dell. There's really no other game that I've been a part of here that, that, has that, that carries that same weight. We're going in this year like we're trying to be in for the first time because that's the truth in the 2012 season. No one expected Michigan State to dominate the series, win four in a row, win twice in Ann Arbor, and win by big scores. These teams have been playing since 1898, more than 100 times. Michigan has won two-thirds of the games overall. In different eras, they have flat-out dominated Michigan State, but not in this era. Michigan State has never beaten Michigan five years in a row, so if that's on the line. And, and I think one thing about Mark D'Antonio is this game means everything to him and to that program, and, and I think he instills that in the players. It's got to be important, and that's why it's a rivalry game. When I see that guy walking across the street in that Michigan shirt, I'm going to bristle up a little bit, but that's just me. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with that. AJ Barker, my brother, is three years older than me. He's got Barker open. He ended up breaking the record in Minnesota for receiving yards and touchdowns, which broke Larry Fitzgerald's record. Well, I don't know what college he is going to choose. Whatever gets him is going to get some kind of player. I was born and raised in St. Paul. I went to school at De La Salle High School, which is just down the road. I actually drove through campus every single day to get to high school. He very much wanted to play for Minnesota. He'd drive down the Mississippi River into downtown. And when he would do that, the lights would come on in the city and he would always say, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Probably around my junior year is when I really decided, you know, I want to try and play in the Big Ten. If that means I have to walk on, I'll walk on. I knew that the chips were stacked against me regardless of where I went and that I had a, a huge uphill battle. Same thing my brother was doing at De La Salle. He started the season as a bench player, seen very limited minutes. I didn't play at all the first six games, and it was very, very frustrating. And I was actually on the verge of quitting. One of the things I believed in is if you start something, you finish it. And Ross, you started the season, you need to finish it. 
All you can do is go out there and work harder. And if you have an opportunity, you take advantage of it. Outside, Parker. It was an inspiration to me, and it just told me, you know, you, you keep working and keep fighting, and you, you, you know, you hope it pays off. He doesn't know it, but you know, he's a role model to me. His will to compete, his will to just live. I completely look up to him for that. Bernard fakes it on the handoff to Fitz going left. Keeps it himself to the right. Dodges one man. Now cuts left up the sideline. 35-30. There he goes. No catching shoelace. Touchdown, Michigan. What a run. The first time I met Denard, it was here at school, his junior year. Very energetic, bubbly, nice kid. The guy they pointed him out, so that's the, that's the quarterback here. And he also might run a little bit of track. Yeah, I went over and spoke to him and introduced myself and been talking ever since. Kenny Brown, <laughs> oh man, he one of the dudes that always gonna keep it straight forward with you and gonna bring the best out of you every time he comes to you. That's somebody that, that means a lot. You know, that was one of the person that gave herself up to me and just, you know, did whatever it takes for me to be successful. Wow, that means a lot to me. That means that, uh, for six years, all the talks, phone calls, and all the interactions, that means that it was a purpose. I'm the one that's gonna critique him very hard because I feel like he's such a perfectionist that if I found a couple holes in something he did, even if he has four or 500 yards, I might say, well, you missed, you left a couple plays out there. Or just something, any little thing that's gonna get him going. He'll be a little quiet and I know he's listening. Denard tucks it and runs left, all sorts of space. Down to the five, into the end zone. One of the best things I've said to him was, if you're gonna do something, you do it 110%. Don't ever uh, go out there and just say, oh, I might lose, or I might, you know, go out there and brush your butt. You put a lot into something, you get a lot in return. Very stern believer of that. The spring of his freshman year, after the football season, the coaches approached him about putting track aside and concentrating solely on football. When we talked about it, I said, you know what? If you go 100% with that, I know you're gonna be successful. If you put in the time and you work as hard as I know you're gonna work, I know you'll be fine. And then the entire world is gonna see how good you are. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2012 is brought to you by Best Buy.